So, welcome once again to our discussion on sustainable development. Yesterday, we are talking about sustainability rules, basically weak version of sustainable development rule and then strong version of sustainability rule. And we said that in weaker version of the sustainable development definition says basically uh, we, we need to ensure only the total capital stock that means man-made physical and human capital should be constant. And why is it called weak? Because it allows substitution possibility between man-made capital and natural capital. But in strong version of sustainable development, uh, they believe that substitution possibility between man-made and natural capital is actually not possible. And even if it is possible, it is not a perfect one ad, as it was assumed in weaker version. So, that is why stronger version, strong sustainability rule, it requires that total stock of natural capital should be constant. And another version is even more stringent uh, within stronger version of sustainable development, which says that critical natural capital, particularly the atmospheric composition, uh, ozone layer, this type of critical component within the natural capital group should be uh, make uh, constant because these critical capitals are required for our very survival. Now, once we discuss about natural uh, uh, weak sustainability and strong sustainability, those concepts, those ideas are basically discussed at the theoretical level. Now, the next question that the economists they ask themselves about how to operationalize these sustainability rules. So, we need something, we need some rules which we can actually operationalize in empirical world to ensure sustainable development. Given that need in background, uh, economist Harnan Daly, he published a paper in the journal Ecological Economics where he basically prescribed certain uh, uh, principles to ensure sustainable development, which was uh, which got popularized as Daly's operational principle for sustainable development. So, this is what we are going to discuss today Daly's Daly's operational principle. of sustainable development. So, Daly's idea of ensuring sustainable development was quite uh, logical, it was logically derived and easy to understand. What Hernan Daly, he said that to get these principles for ensuring sustainable development, we must think what are the channels, what are the different channels through which we are actually uh, disturbing the environment or indirectly we can say that what are the channels by which we are affecting we are we are affecting uh, the nature or natural environment. Now, if we pose that question, then these are the three ways by which we are disturbing the environment by extracting renewable resources, renewable resources. So, for renewable resources, what Daly said that our rate of extraction, the rate of extraction should be lower than the growth rate of the renewable resource. This renewable resource for example, fish or forest for example. 
So, what is it that rate of extraction rate of extraction should be less than should be less than uh, a rate of rate of growth rate of growth ok. If growth rate is higher than rate of extraction then that will always preserve a critical amount of stock of this renewable resource which should be adequate for this renewable resource to have their regenerating capacity. That is why rate of extraction should be lower than rate of growth. That is the first principle when we think about uh, uh, maintaining sustainability of this renewable resources, non declining renewable resource stock. Second one is non renewable resource. These are oil, coal, so on and so forth. And the idea to maintain sustainability for non-renewable resources is quite uh, it is little involved. What Hutton and Daly he said, let us say that by extracting non-renewable resource we generate R amount of revenue, R is the revenue. let us say generated from generated from non renewable resource which in short I will write n r ok. Now, this total revenue should be decomposed into two components one is called income component and another one is called investment component. Let us say that r equals to alpha into r sorry alpha into r plus beta into r ok. So, that means alpha fraction of the total revenue this is let us say call income stream and this is called investment scheme. Okay, where alpha plus beta equals to 1. Okay. So, alpha fraction of the revenue that we generate from the extraction of non renewable resource that is called income and beta fraction of this total revenue which is denoted as investment. right? If that is the case, then what Arnandali says that the economy can enjoy only the income component of the revenue derived from the uh, extraction of non renewable resource, ok. And this investment component should be reinvested into renewable alternative so that when the stock of non renewable resource comes to an end for economic extraction, then we get a renewable alternatives which will give you equivalent amount of service what you wish to derive from the non renewable one at the starting of the period. Okay. So, that means basically they say that let us say that this is the starting point of extraction let us say this is T 1 and you generate the revenue R where it is equals to alpha r plus beta into r. So, alpha r you enjoy as income beta r is reinvested. So, that at the end T 2 when your stock of non renewable resource comes to an end for economic extraction then we get an alternative of alternative of renewable resource or I would say that 
non renewable here I will say that renewable alternative. are available ok right this is his idea now the question is how do you derive this uh, how do you decide about this beta that means what is the component what is the fraction we should keep for investment that we should decide what are the factors so what are the factors factors that determine that determine beta or or the investment component component of R. There are certain factors. Firstly, the present stock of present stock of non-renewable resource non-renewable resource that will determine then what is your rate of extraction rate of extraction thirdly the rate of technological advancement then fourthly what is your discount rate these are the main factor ok so that means if the present stock of non renewable resource is too much so obviously you can invest very less amount to get alternatives if the rate of extraction is too high then the stock will get depleted very soon so obviously you should spend more for investment larger fraction should be kept for investment. If the rate of technological advancement is quite high that means you expect that immediately we are going to get an additional techno uh, an alternative technology which will make it possible for the non -renew uh, renewable alternatives to have and discount rate. If your discount rate for the future that means we must understand the uh, renewable alternatives would be available after some point of time and what would be the benefit that means if we feel that the present benefit of present benefit of the non renewable uh, resources are too much then we should actually we should actually uh, uh, keep beta at a very lower level but if we feel no the present value is not that much rather actually uh, the future value of this is quite high then the beta should be the uh, fraction should be higher. So, these are the factors that will determine what should be the beta fraction okay, of non renewable uh, revenue that we, so we must keep for investment. Okay. So, this is about this is about the rule related to uh, the non renewable resource extraction then then the last one related to pollution this is the third channel by which we are actually disturbing the environment and when we make we are making pollution actually what we are doing we are utilizing here we are utilizing the absorptive capacity we are utilizing the absorptive
capacity of the environment okay absorptive capacity of the environment so that means we must decide first about what is the nature's absorptive capacity and while making pollution that means rate of emission should be what is the rule then rate of emission rate of emission should be lower than absorptive capacity capacity of the environment as absorptive or assimilative capacity so at any point of time our rate of discharge of emission rate of discharge of pollutants should be lower than the nature's absorptive capacity if that we can ensure then we can maintain sustainable development so these are the three principles basically principle number 3 is related to pollution principle number 2 is related to the extraction of non renewable resource and principle number 1 is the rule is the principle related to the extraction of renewable resource and if these three principles we can assure if we can assure that these three principles are satisfied then according to hernan daly operational principle will say that we are on the sustainable development path right this is how we can ensure now once we get to know about this operational principle of hernan daly the next question that comes to our mind is all right now we have decided about the operational principle now we need certain indicators we need certain indicators to measure sustainable development and these indicators will also help us know about which country has achieved sustainable development to what extent right so our next topic for discussion would be indicators of sustainable development